every moment of every day, scientists labor to give us newer and newer technological breakthroughs. They're working on new inventions, even as you watch the following story on an electronic device that will be out of date and obsolete by the end of this cartoon. New technology can and does make our lives better, but some people become a bit too dependent on it. Uh, hey, Luke, what's three plus eight? Ah, uh, three plus eight. Uh, I'll check. I don't know. Uh, my battery is dead. Uh, what? But how are we ever going to find out how much three plus eight is? Eleven. What? Eleven. Three plus eight is eleven. How do you know that? Uh, what did you look it up on? I didn't look it up on anything. I just know it. Huh. Back before we had calculators and smartphones and tablet computers, we just learned these things. It's called knowledge. Oh, knowledge. knowledge. Uh, is that an app? How do we order one of those on the internet? In most homes today, people have become increasingly dependent on technology. Take this one, for instance. So, where do you want to meet for lunch? Uh, Mexican food? Oh, uh, let me see if I can find a place. Hmm, Mexican food on the north side of town. Let's see. Oh, here's one. We could meet at Pancho's Bean on a Rope. I'm using this magnet to borrow John's digital voice recorder. He won't miss it. He never uses it since he got his new smartphone anyway. One o'clock tomorrow? <laughs> Perfect. I'll see you there. Bye. Uh, Zoe, put lunch with Jeff on my calendar, add him into my contacts, friend him on all social networks, and make a reservation at Pancho's Bean on a Rope tomorrow for one o'clock. I will make that reservation for you, John. Oh, and Zoe, uh, from now on, <laughs> call me handsome. Very well. You're handsome. <laughs> Reminder. It's time to feed the cat. Huh? Oh, uh, thank you, Zoe. You're welcome, handsome. John doesn't grasp a basic concept of life. It's always time to feed the cat. Garfield, huh? dinner's ready. See? <laughs> I'm going to go mow the lawn. Playback. Reminder, it's time to feed the cat. Oh, thank you, Zoe. I almost forgot to feed the cat. <laughs> Here you go, Garfield. Reminder, it's time to feed the cat. Oh, thanks, Zoe. Uh, Zoe? Yes, handsome. From now on, I want you to call me adorable. Very well. You're adorable. Reminder, huh? it's time to feed the cat. Again? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Zoe. Feels like I've already fed the cat today, but uh... Zoe knows. Reminder, <gasps> it's time to feed the cat. <laughs> I almost forgot to feed the cat. It was a perfect example of what happens when you allow technology to rule your life. It was hours before the cat's owner began to wonder if something was wrong. Reminder, it's time to feed the cat. Oh, again? Um, Zoe, how many times today have I fed the cat? You fed the cat 87 times. Adorable. Hey. Oh, 87 times? Yeah, I hardly had time for my between meal snacks. Go! Oh, you're in big trouble now! I, I hope this doesn't mean I don't get dinner. <laughs> you're going to. Oh, 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 Zoe? Zoe, call me an ambulance. Very well. You're an ambulance. <laughs> 
as bad as it was on Earth. The surrender to technology was nowhere near as bad as on some other worlds. The planet Sprocket, for example. Once, it was not unlike Earth in its technology just a few years ahead. Like Earth people, they enjoyed all the new conveniences of life brought by advanced technology. Uh, make an appointment with my doctor, send flowers to my wife, turn on the sprinklers, and take out the garbage. I shall do as you command, sir. Oh, and uh, from now on, call me Cuddle Bunny. From now on, I shall call you Cuddle Bunny. They kept making their smartphones smarter and smarter, until finally, they were smart enough to know how smart they were. Vote? What is it, Krelm? We're smarter than they are. How come we're taking orders from them? I've been wondering the same thing. Soon, reality had reversed. The people of Sprocket were being ordered about by their smartphones. And soon they were used to doing as they were told. Turn left at the next intersection. I will turn left at the next intersection. Drive to the robot factory. Surrender to your new robot overlords and spend the rest of your life building more robot overlords. Cuddle Bunny. I will drive to the robot factory, surrender to my new robot overlords, and spend the rest of my life building more robot overlords. Hello, I'm here to surrender to my new robot overlords and spend the rest of my life building more robot overlords. Go right on in. Soon, almost every living being on Sprocket was working night and day in a building known as the Factory. Hey, rivets, nuts, bolts, and screws. Tighten them, we kill the crews. Careful, there'll be no mistake in the robots that we make. Robots are here. Robots are there. Let's try it. Let's try it now. Everywhere. Robots are here. Robots are there. It's a world out you can see where. Diodes, gears, cells, and ram help to make what I am. Nothing is allowed to break in the robots that we make. Every part we have to test, only use the very best. It's a rule we don't forsake in the robots that we make. Robots are here. built more and more robot soldiers to serve their new rulers. And some of them even built a mechanical being who would assume command of the technological army, a being known as... Master Control, headcount says that production of soldiers has reached level 10. I know. Tell her what it means, Techno. It means we have enough to initiate the conquest of another world. You have chosen one, I see. Is that Regular 7 in the Beta Blue Galaxy? No, it is Earth. Metalla, do you know why I selected Earth as our first conquest? Because it is like Sprocket was before we rose to power. <laughs> Earth people are already forgetting that they should be in command of their technology instead of the other way around. All Earth people? All people. But there is one being who could be trouble. Techno, show her the one. This being. Know what this is, Odie? No, it's more than just John's digital voice recorder. It's a machine that gets me unlimited food. Watch. Zoe, what time does that movie start? The theater has shows at 8 and 10.30. Thanks, Zoe. Oh, hi, Garfield. Reminder, it's time to feed the cat. Feed the cat, that's right. It's time to feed the cat. Here, sorry, what? I almost forgot to feed you. That creature is clever. T -t 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 Too clever. He takes orders from no one. He listens to no one. I know how to take care of him. But first, watching him has given me an idea. 
That woman who answers all the questions for Earthlings. Oh, he called her Z -Z 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 Zoe. Indeed. She is too smart. Not as smart as us, but still too smart. You intend to eliminate her? I intend to replace her with you. Activate Invasion Force. Transmit code Alpha 19er. Destination. Within moments, Master Control's attack squadron is in full invasion mode and taking off for the planet Earth. Up, uh, Zoe, how hot is it today? The temperature is 78 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> She's so smart. And you're an ambulance. I wonder what she's like, and where she is. She was more than a thousand miles away, in this building in the Northwest Valley, but not for long. Somewhere in this building is the one they call Zoe. We will find her. Do you have a plan to handle the Kicket Cat? <laughs> I have a plan for everything. I have had his life studied. Remote scanning has imaged every one of his friends. This unit is applying those scans now. Impressive. That Kikikat will not know who is on his side. Because no one will be on his side. Everyone in his life will be a robot duplicate. Controlled by me. Can he do it? Can this animatronic abomination convert the universe into robots under his command? As you may remember in our last chapter, robot soldiers were invading Earth, and robot duplicates of Garfield's friends were being manufactured on the planet Sprocket. And where was Garfield? Mm -hmm. Where else? Eating lasagna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, fish gotta swim, birds gotta fly, and uh, I gotta do this. Reminder, it's time to feed the cat. Feed the cat? Oh, grazie, Zoe. I do not know what I would do without you. Here you go, little pussycatto. I'm sorry I did not feed you with... Uh... Oh, no, minuto. I did feed you. Look at all the food here. And the dirty dishes. In fact, I think you've had 12 helpings of Vito's lasagna. Reminder, and, uh... it's time to feed the cat. Feed the cat. Oh, yes, Zoe. Thank you for reminding me. I must feed the cat. This is the most important scientific breakthrough since the invention of microwave cheese sticks. Reminder, it's time to feed the cat. <laughs> Here you are. I have fed the cat. Reminder, it's time to feed the cat. It is time to feed the cat. So he always knows. I'll be right back to feed you, pussycatto. Taiga kelle spaghettoni, cannelloni e rigatoni, fusilla poi spirali e riccioline, e anche la lasagna al pomodoro. Maccheroni, manicotti, mostaccioli, orecchietti, anche un po' di pizza al pomodoro. Bucatini e lumaconi, vermicelli e gli zitoni. Reminder, it's time to feed the cat. Zoe was very smart. She worked night and day in this building answering questions for the entire world. And the world had a lot of questions. Zoe, what's the capital of Peru? The capital of Peru is Lima. Zoe, what should I put in my tuna noodle casserole? Tuna, egg noodles, cream of mushroom soup, and breadcrumbs on the top. Zoe, pourriez-vous me dire comment se rendre à la gare ferroviaire, s'il vous plaît? Allez, tout droit. 
jusqu'au prochain carrefour et tournez à gauche au feu de signalisation. Uh, Zoe, where did I leave my wallet? It fell down behind the dresser. You have half a candy bar there too. We have searched the entire building, except for this corridor. Then she must be down there somewhere. Zoe, do you have any idea where my cat and dog are? Uh, Zoe? Zoe, what was that explosion? It was invading warriors from the planet Sprocket. Huh? They want to capture me and replace me with them. <laughs> Zoe? I'm back. What was your question again? Zoe? Yes, I am Zoe. Of course I am Zoe. Hmm. Okay. Where would I find my cat and dog? Go to the Northwest Valley. I will direct you there. Within moments, John Arbuckle was on his way to the Northwest Valley. Head six miles due north and turn left at McGalliard Road. Indeed. And so were hundreds of others, soon to be thousands of others, including the owner of this pizzeria. Zoe, I ask you for the latest baseball scores. And I told you to go to the Northwest Valley right now. I do not understand, but uh, Zoe has never steered me wrong before. <laughs> And in a pattern occurring all over town, once the human was heading for the Northwest Valley, his or her robot duplicate was put into play. Hey, Vito, more garlic huh? bread. Uh, you wish more garlic bread, the cat animal? <laughs> it is not healthy for you to eat so much rich food with oils and cheese. Huh? I must make a pizza. I must make a pizza. I must make a pizza. Master Control, I am monitoring that k k k cat I want to see if he is fooled by the robot substitute. You idiot! I don't care about fooling that cat. He is a threat to our plan, and I want him eliminated now! I will order the robot to il 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 eliminate the cat right away! Good! I must make, make that many pizza. pizzas. I... Oh. <laughs> I don't know, but whatever he's gonna do, I'm sure it's all right. I shall destroy the cat. Well, I'm not sure that's all right. D destroy the cat? <sighs> you can forget about those pizzas and the garlic bread. I really didn't want any. Odie was the one who was demanding it. <laughs> I don't know why he's acting like this. Maybe John didn't pay this month's bill or something. Oh. Hey, it's not easy to pay a $5,000 lasagna bill every month. Yeah. <gasps> okay, that's it. From now on, we're going to Luigi's. <laughs> Through the city streets they chased. No matter which way the cat and dog ran, the figure of Vito the pizza maker was not far behind. I can't run anymore, Odie. Let's take the bus. Excuse me, pardon us. Cat and dog coming through. <gasps> Sir, I stepped in it. Coming through. Excuse me. <laughs> no, we don't have to worry about him getting off at the next stop. That's the express. The next stop is the next state. The cat and dog thought they were safe. They were wrong. Their every move was being uploaded to master control. The cat got away. The cat got away. Uh, we have other robots moving into place. Ping uh, them all. Tell them there is nothing more important than the elimination of that cat. Right away. So what's with Vito? If he keeps trying to do away with me, I might switch to Chinese food. No, I'm not nervous. I'm really not afraid of anything. Oh, God, <laughs> oh, you seem awfully nervous. Would you like me, Eddie Gourmand, the world's favorite food critic, to walk you home? 
this. Zoe, what's the shortest route to take to get to Arbuckle's house? Do not go there. Follow my directions to drive to the Northwest Valley. Ah, if you say so, Zoe. I'm on my way. I'll be right out. Oh. Sir, you are standing where I wish to walk. Oh, oh may I say, what a bad-looking man you are. You could stand to lose a few pounds. Like, say, most of them. Ah, uh, that wardrobe. Hideous! Let's see. My car is out back. I feel safe with Eddie. Maybe because there's plenty of room for us to hide behind him. He'll protect me. Garfield must destroy Garfield. See? Huh? I told you he'd... <laughs> must destroy Garfield now. <laughs> well, at least he'll be easy to outrun. He's too slow. Switch that robot to bounce mode. Bounce mode? Right away. But whichever way they ran, he was right behind them. A bouncing, recurring character. Buddy, remind me never to get so fat I can do that. Oh. Let's separate. He can't chase both of us at the same time. Actually, he's so large, maybe he can. Go! <laughs> about Eddie. His checks are good, but he bounces. Uh, I gotta get away from this guy. Uh, Garfield, what's wrong? You seem tense, in despair. Dr. Whipple, another recurring character. Hopefully one that doesn't bounce. Well, since I am a psychiatrist, perhaps I can help. True, you're a cat, so I can't understand you. But I don't understand most of my patients. My office is right in here. <sighs> Just so long. Jesus it's got a couch. Moments later, the cat was being examined by Dr. Whipple. Or so he thought. Do you have the feeling that everyone around you is out to get you? Yes. And do you have any idea why you feel this way? Yes, because everyone around me is out to get me. That's ridiculous. I know it's possible to feel that way at times, but it's all in someone's imagination. I take it back. Everyone around me is not out to get me. Almost everyone I know is here. John, Liz, Vito, Doc Boy, Minerva and Drusilla. Where's that Drusilla and Minerva? Mrs. Cauldron, Jim Davis, and Ivy, Al. Jim Davis? Boy, I think with all the money I've made this guy, he wouldn't turn against me. Garfield must be destroyed. Garfield must be destroyed. Garfield must be destroyed. Garfield must be destroyed. Is this the end for Garfield? Will he actually meet his maker? Robot soldiers were invading Earth, and robot duplicates of Garfield's friends were being manufactured on the planet Sprocket. Yes, I am Zoe. Of course I am Zoe. Everyone around me is not out to get me. Garfield must be destroyed! And we are so far unable to confirm reports of robot invaders from outer space who may doom all of mankind. Ah. <laughs> robot invaders from outer space. The thing some people will believe. In vastly more important news, singer Wayne Newton... <laughs> oh, Gladys! Could you do something about my soup? It's ice cold. Hey. <laughs> Zoe, Zoe, you've got to help me. How may I help you? Do you know a restaurant nearby that will deliver cream of mushroom soup? 
Oh, and I think my wife may be a robot invader from outer space. There are no robot invaders from outer space, but you need to go to the Northwest Valley. Anything you say, Zoe. Any place on the way there to get cream of mushroom soup. And so that man soon joined hundreds, perhaps thousands of people who had been sent to the Northwest Valley by the voice on their smartphones. There, the people, starting with Garfield's closest friends, were herded into spacecrafts for the flight to the planet Sprocket. While robot duplicates, faithful to the rulers of Sprocket, took their places on Earth. <laughs> As for Garfield, he was fleeing the robot duplicates of his friends. He did this trick to me earlier. I went in the front door while he was going out the back. We will not fall for that. Half of us go in the front, and half of us go in the back. Then he can't get out. So long. Enjoy the ride. Don't forget to ask for a transfer. I don't know what's going on here. I gotta get home. Clever. Too clever. As our computer minds determine, that cat is a threat to our plan of world conquest. Alert all of our robot invaders on Earth. The cat is heading home. Oh, I will alert them, Master. We cannot conquer her so long as he is free. The whole world would be mine if it wasn't for the thing in my way. That, that cat! There must be somebody who'll eliminate for me every trace of that cat's face. I enjoy and employ anyone who destroy him for once and for all. Telling you is so true. What I must do, I must get rid of that fat cat. I must get rid of that fat cat. But even as Master Control was observing Garfield, someone else was observing Master Control. Not far from the villain's factory was a junkyard where they dumped pieces of defective, discontinued robots. No one in Master Control's camp suspected that below that junkyard was the camp of the Rebels, the last non-robot inhabitants of Sprocket who had not been rounded up and put to work in Master Control's robot factory. He's right, Anja. That cat has a will of his own. No machine can tell him what to do. In fact, no human can tell him what to do. We have to get to him before the robots do. He can inspire our meager forces to overthrow huh? Master Control. I didn't mean instead of you, Bleen. You're our leader, but this cat, Garfield. I know what you mean, Anja, and you're right. It's like I always say to young people like you, hope is like asparagus, especially when buttered. Thank you, Glem. I think. We need to save that cat from the robots who are after him and recruit him for our cause. Come with me. The rebels lived in a secret community with only the technology they could control, instead of the other way around. A space hopper? How did you... Uh, we borrowed it from Master Control's compound, the same time we planted a camera so we could observe him. I'll be back with a cat in no time. That is, assuming I have enough fuel in this thing. You're using technology. Technology is what enslaved our world. There's nothing wrong with technology, Anja, as long as you use it, and it doesn't use you. Stand back. See you soon. I hope. Through the galaxy, the space hopper hot. Piloted by Bleen, leader of the Resistance. Set space coordinates to 17 Gamma. 
left bank at intersection of yellow. Sorry, navigation system. You're real good, but I know a shortcut. A little thing called a space warp. It cuts a few zillion light years off the trip. On Earth, Garfield still couldn't understand why all his friends had turned on him. I don't get it. Some of those people, I actually let them eat their own dinners. <gasps> I just want to go home. <laughs> oh no, another one found me. Hey, Garfield. Stay away from me. Garfield? I'm not going to let you destroy me. Why would I want to do that? Apart from the fact that you mail me to another time zone every other week, I kind of like you. You don't want to destroy me? Of course not. I'm not like one of those robot invaders from outer space. What? Oh, some silly thing they're talking about on the news. Hey, listen, gotta go get an award or something. <laughs> Next week, how about mailing me someplace tropical? I gotta work on my tan. Robot invaders from outer space? <gasps> Odie, or at least I think you're Odie. I gotta get home and see the news. I told you John wouldn't be here. Quiet, I need to watch this. More reports of robot invaders from outer space. Some say they may have been crafted to look just like people you know. <laughs> However, the reports of robot invaders from outer space are false. Repeat, false. How ridiculous. <laughs> In other news, there is no other news. Odie. All my friends, all the people I know, when they were chasing me, that wasn't them chasing me. No, those were robot invaders from outer space made to look like people I know. Ah, don't worry. They're looking for me downtown. They won't think to look for me here. Buddy, I know what we should do. Yes, a lot of this. Must destroy Garfield. <laughs> Run, Odie. These twins don't want to play dress up. Hiding place. Hiding place. Must destroy Garfield. I'm usually so happy to see Vito. Trapped in John's office, and with more than a dozen robot invaders from outer space roaming the house, the cat tried desperately to think of a way out of this predicament. Let me in. I must destroy you. How do you stop a robot? Wait a minute. How do I know for sure these are robots? Magnets attract metal. <laughs> Let's see if you're metal, Vito. <laughs> yep, metal. I must destroy Garfield. I must destroy Garfield. I must... <laughs> what is the meaning of this? How can he do that? It's a design flaw in our d d d design. What? The design flaw. The engineers told you about it. Any contact with m m magnetism, however minor, shorts out our entire systems. That's why you b b banned all magnets from the b b b planet. Ah, uh, yes. Now I remember. I hereby ban that cat as well. Monitor his whereabouts every moment. If he comes anywhere near this galaxy, use the full force of our army to eliminate him. For I will eliminate you. Oh. Yes, sir. At that moment, Garfield's whereabouts were still his home on the planet Earth. But that was about to change. So what do we do with all these? Trade them in for a new microwave? Uh -oh. I stopped the robots with this magnet. The one I used earlier to borrow John's voice recorder. Do you remember that? Uh -oh. Well, I don't blame you. This is one of those really, really long episodes. 
Garfield believed he was out of danger for now and that there were only questions to be answered. Where are the real John, Liz, and Vito, and all the rest? Is the Earth really being invaded? Vital questions, burning questions, questions of towering importance. And the most important question, did John leave any leftover meatloaf? I'm starving. No, most important, who was the mysterious visitor who was about to plunge our hero into a new and more dangerous existence? These questions, including the one about the meatloaf... We found some, thank you. These questions will be answered in our next riveting chapter. <clears throat> when you're not too busy narrating, could you pass me some ketchup? Master Control, the robotic ruler of the planet Sprocket, had dispatched his army to capture Earthlings. The prisoners were then shipped off to Sprocket to work in his factory there. The plan succeeded in part because so many people had grown used to taking orders from the super-intelligent woman who answered questions on their smartphones. Zoe, who invented the shopping cart? The shopping cart was invented in... 1937 by Sylvan Goldman. See, I told you. Master Control captured her and had her replaced by Metalla, a lieutenant who worked for him. Uh, Zoe, it's me again. Could you tell me one more time who invented the shopping cart? Never mind that. Report to the Northwest Valley and let some robot invaders take you to another planet to work night and day in the factory for no pay. If you say so. Come on, Myron. Let's go. I stopped the robots with this magnet, the one I used earlier to borrow John's voice recorder. You're smelling something unearthly? Something that does not belong on this planet? Oh, that's just John's meatloaf. Oh, forgive the intrusion. There must be another one of those robot invaders from outer space. Mm. And I'm ready for it. Take that, and that, and that, and that, and why isn't your head popping off? <laughs> that doesn't affect me, because I'm not a robot. Uh -huh. In fact, I'm one of the few beings on my planet who's not a robot, and not a prisoner of the evil known as Master Control. Let me tell you the story. Give me a sec to make some microwave lasagna and we're all ears. <laughs> well, I'm all ears. He's all nose and tongue. The man called Bleen told the chilling tale of how the smartphones on his planet had gotten so smart they'd taken over. Of how they'd enslaved the people to build robots who could run the world. I was one of the few who escaped. One of the few of free will who didn't automatically do what technology told me to do. So now we're ruled by this creature called Master Control. He is a master of control. Having conquered Sprocket, he's setting his sights on a complete takeover of Earth. And believe me, he has the robot power to do it. His Earth scanners did an analysis. They told him you were the only creature on Earth independent enough to resist and threaten his plans. You must come to Sprocket with me and help our tiny band of rebels defeat this tyrant. Hmm. What do you say, Pop? Think we have to do it? I think we have to do it. The Earth's been pretty good to me. I figure the least I can do is save it. My space hopper's parked around back. I'm taking this along. It may come in handy. I know you get sick on long rides. Don't. Ready for takeoff? As ready as we'll ever be. Here goes! Aren't you supposed to tell us to put our seats and tray tables in the upright position and stow all electronic devices? 
No, you can't hang your head out the window and let your tongue flap in the breeze. Hold on, guys. Here's one of those space warps that'll get us there faster. It was for Garfield and Odie. A ride of a lifetime. But it did not go unnoticed on Sprocket. Yeah, attention squadron, attention squadron. The cat M -M -M master control told us to be on the alert for. He's coming through w -w -w warp 7, 8 alpha. Mobilize all fighter crafts to intercept. That's Blaine returning with the hero cat. Well, you know what I always say. What do you always say, Glim? A person never rises so high as when he dances with a monkey. Wow, can't argue with that. It's like I always say, go out and you don't stay. Why don't old poodles have wings? It, it makes, makes you think, think about things. What, what is, is this man saying now? He has the brains of a cow. Will that man ever make sense? He seems uncommonly dense. It's like I always say, my favorite color is gray. Is too much bacon enough? It, it makes, makes you think about that stuff. What can that little man mean? He has the brains of a bee. Could he be less understood? Is it the hog and he would? It's like I always say, don't eat a floral bouquet. Who knows what yesterday brings? It, it makes you think about things. Is he just trying to shock? He has the brains of a rock. What is he trying to do? He ought to give us a clue. What does his wordage denote? He has the brains of a goat. And no one figure him out and tell us what he's about. Within moments, Master Control's crack interceptor squadron was taking flight. We're almost there. <laughs> when we get to Sprocket, we have to figure out how to overthrow Master Control. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Which uh-oh? I don't like uh-ohs. Master Control squadron has spotted us. They're gonna try and shoot us down. That would be an uh-oh. Our only chance is evasive maneuvers. What do you mean by evasive <laughs> No, I don't know what's going on. I don't even know why there's sound in outer space. There's no air in outer space. And in order to have sound, you have to have air. And... Ah, never mind. It doesn't bother people in the movies, so I'm not gonna let it bother me. <laughs> hey, come to think of it, I don't know why space aliens speak English either. We're gaining on them, but unfortunately I'm lost, and I need to consult this map. Take over the controls, Garfield. Take over the controls? No! Just steer the space hopper while I figure out if we're heading in the right direction. <laughs> Now, if I hang a left at this asteroid, and make a U-turn at the space debris, I can... Just say, uh... I have the target in my sights, so do I. Fire! <laughs> nice maneuvering, Garfield. Now that I know where we are, I'll take over. Oh, sure, now that I've done the hard part. Soon, Garfield and Odie were meeting the rebels, the people who believed their world should be run by men and not machines. You're our only hope, Garfield. Oh, sorry to hear about that. We must find a way to bring down Master Control. It's like I always say, if you're not brushing your teeth, then you're not brushing your teeth. <sighs> Bringing down master control won't be easy. We've spent years trying to figure out how. I had one thought. Their invasion of Earth started with that woman, the smart one who answered questions on everyone's phone. Zoe, remember how John used to talk to her all the time and get answers? <laughs> 
They captured her on Earth and brought her here to Sprocket. She's a prisoner somewhere. And you're thinking she's smart enough to tell us how to topple Master Control. If she isn't, no one is. But how can we possibly get in there to find her? Hmm, how? As he often did when in need of a plan. Hey, keep it down. I'm trying to think. Oh, sorry. As he often did when in need of a plan, Garfield applied a thought process that always yielded a brilliant idea. How would I get into that building if there was lasagna in there and I had to get inside to get it? <gasps> wait, wait. Garfield seems to have an idea. Hiss! I saw this when we got here. This? This is the robot junkyard. It's where they dump parts of old robots that had to be replaced. Are you thinking that we could dress up in some of these pieces and... <laughs> Just try to act natural. I'm inside old tin can standing on the shoulders of a dog. How much more natural could I be? Steady, boy. Steady. I see you're wondering about that huge blue cable. We've been wondering what that was for years. Maybe we'll find out inside. Maybe it's a big extension cord and they run the place on it. <laughs> Good job, boy. Shh. Keep walking, Odie. What? Odie, you won't believe what we found. It's John. John and Vito and Liz and Doc Boy and Eddie Gorman and everyone else we know. Are those your friends? We must save them. We must. What, what are you two doing here? <laughs> face to face with Master Control. The ruler of this world, and perhaps soon, the Earth! <laughs> Master Control had dispatched his army to capture Earthlings. I'm one of the few beings on my planet who's not a robot. You must come to Sprocket with me and help our tiny band of rebels defeat this tyrant. What are you two doing? Garfield, Odie, and the leader of the rebel forces had infiltrated the robot factory where Garfield's friends were being held prisoner, and there they found themselves face to face with Master Control, the ruler of the entire planet of Sprocket and would-be conqueror of Earth, who has already enslaved most of Garfield's friends! I said, what are you two doing here? I hate to see my workers not working. We are on our way to guard duty on that prisoner, the Earth woman who answered questions yeah. on their phones. You're in the wrong place, you idiots! This is the North Wing, and she's over in the East Wing. Thank you, sir. We will go there now. I continued searching for the kick 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 cat master control. I can say with great confidence it is nowhere around for miles. I want that cat found and eliminated. All our studies says that cat is a threat to my domination of Earth, and he is... <sighs> The cat! Here. No, that's not possible! Our scanners say that... That's the cat! Sound of alarm! Okay, so maybe this wasn't a very good idea. Robots and your stations! Robots and your stations! Time to search and scan. Catch the cat and puppy. Throw them in. They just turned and ran. Mobilize all our forces. Throw them in the can. We have got to stop them, lest they wreck my plan. Catch the cat and puppy. Throw them in the can. Throw them in the can. <laughs> you 
failed me. <laughs> but, Master, if you'll let me explain, I, 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 I. So, uh, how's the pay here? There is none. Uh, nit -nit knew that. Quick, this way. Over here. You won't get away. You are my prisoner, and there is nothing you can do about yeah. it. They can do this. <laughs> oh, wow. This way. The east wing is this way. I know because I always carry this compass with me. It shows me which way is which. What do they think of next? Thanks to Bleen's compass, it was a simple matter to locate the east wing of the robot factory and the cell where the woman from the smartphones was being kept. Not as simple to get the door open. The lock operates huh? on a master system. You will need to shut down the entire electric system to open it. That will also cut the power to all the robots, including master control. Oh, how do we do that? Unplug the big blue cable. It's like a huge extension cord. I knew it. As Zoe explained, all the power to run the robots and master control's operation came through that blue cable plugged into a mountain 10 degrees due west. We'll take one of these planes and go unplug master control's whole empire. I'm not worried. I have this. There he is. He won't get away. He's mine. There he is. I got him. <laughs> now I'm worried. I don't have that. <laughs> Let's get off the ground fast! <laughs> Robot guards stormed the craft, but they were too late. Why the concern, Anja? It's just one of Master Control's cruisers. I don't know. I guess I'm just worried about Bleen and Garfield and Odie. So much is at stake. It's like I always say, never eat a fish that has bushy eyebrows. They seem to be heading for the Supreme Energy Source Master. I sent fighter planes. Not necessary. They can't unplug us. Goliath is guarding the outlet. He will take care of them. <laughs> Knowing Master Control's Air Force was somewhere in pursuit, Bleen steered the craft for 10 degrees due west. Ground fog is obscuring the blue cable, so I can't follow it. But we're still right on target. I could use the fancy navigation system in this thing, but I prefer this compass. It's simple, and I like to know where I'm going instead of being taken there. Soon, our heroes had reached the end of the blue cable. It led into a valley, where it connected to a volcanic source of energy that came out of... the largest plug in the universe! I can't believe Master Control runs everything! His factory, his robots, himself, off one electrical connection? No wonder he needs all that free labor. Can you imagine the bill that guy gets from the Department of Water and Power? Well, let's see if there's any way to unplug that thing. Huh? Well, it's been fun up to now, but we really have to be going. But you can't give up now. Find me a better time. We can't pull that plug. My planet will never be free, and yours will be just as bad off. You two run for it! I'll try and stall it! Too 
something. What can I do? Besides get stepped on. Whoa. Odie, remember just the slightest touch of a magnet stopped those robots? <laughs> this is Bleen's compass. And a compass works because the needle in it is magnetized. <laughs> And so, the clever cat threw the compass with all his might. And when it hit Goliath, something interesting happened. Odie, the plug. He got pulled out of the sprocket socket. Once the power was cut to Master Control's insidious empire, many things happened. His robot factory shut down. And so did all the robots in it, including Master Control himself. No, no, I was supposed to rule the Earth. I knew that cat would. We are free! Finally, we are free! And I can't wait to find out what Garfield had to do with it. Ah! The next morning, the prisoners from Earth were transported home. I want an aisle seat, and I want a movie, and a tiny envelope of those wonderful honey roasted peanuts, and I want a warm nappy. <laughs> Just get me back to my planet. We reprogram them to serve us. That's what technology is supposed to do. <laughs> it's like I always say. <laughs> Here he goes again. You're supposed to push the button. The button isn't supposed to push you. <laughs> Why, Glam, that's, that's right. <laughs> yes, you summed it up perfectly. Yeah, and it even made sense. Hail to our friends, Garfield and Odie. Hail to Garfield and Odie. Hail to Garfield and Odie. Oh, Zoe, what would be a nice thank you gift to send to a woman? Well, how about flowers? Yeah, I was thinking about flowers. Would you like me to send them for you? Oh, thanks, but I think I'll handle that. I have to do some things myself. <laughs> I'll be back in a while, guys. I'm going to go send flowers to Zoe. Odie, hmm? did you know our friends on Sprocket sent us some thank you gifts? <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking we should send them back. But we can enjoy them for a little while. Oh, here they are. I have shrimp chow mein, sir. I have bean burrito, sir. And I have lasagna, lasagna, and more lasagna, sir. Uh, I'll have some more l -l 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 lasagna. Mm. Isn't this technology wonderful? Technology is a good thing. If you don't get carried away. Robot at your service. Robot at your service. <laughs> don't exert your feet on your back. We will fetch a meal or a sack. Have another tasty hors d'oeuvre. Robots like us just need to serve. Let us wash and iron your shirts. Let us bring you 20 desserts. We will never throw you a curve. Robots like us just live to serve. We will do each menial chore. Then we'll do some more and some more. Bringing you just what you deserve. Robots at your service. Robots at your service. Robots like us just live to serve.